Hey guys, Avi here, and welcome back to our Python programming series. In today's video, we're diving into the heart of Python, functions. Functions are crucial in any programming language due to their role in promoting code reuse, thereby enhancing the efficiency and compactness of your code. Let's take a real world example. Imagine you're a baker who makes a particular type of bread. Let's call it Avi's special bread. Now to make this bread, you have to follow a specific set of steps. You first mix the ingredients, then you knead the dough, then you let it rise, and finally you bake it in the oven. Whenever you need to make this bread, you repeat these steps. Now you could think of this process as a function in the real world. You have a name for it, Avi's special bread, and you have a specific set of steps that you need to carry out whenever you want to make this bread. In Python, you could translate this into a function called make special bread. The function would include the steps or the lines of code needed to make the bread. And just like in real life, whenever you want to make this bread, you just have to call the function instead of writing out all the steps every time. This concept like baking applies to programming. With functions, we bake our code into reusable sets of instructions that can be used whenever needed, saving time and making our code cleaner and more efficient. Creating a function in Python is simple. You start with the def keyword, which is short for define. After that, you enter in the function's name. For example, let's say we want to build a function that simply prints hello world. So we'll call our function hello underscore world. And then after that, add in some empty parentheses. These empty brackets indicate that our function doesn't need any input parameters. Inside the function, we can add the code we want to reuse, in this case, print hello world. Now, if we just run this code, we don't see any output because we've only defined the function without calling it. Remember, a function needs to be explicitly called to execute its code. So we can invoke our function by entering hello underscore world and then empty brackets, which gives us our familiar greeting, hello world. Now let's create a more interactive function one that takes a user's name as input and greets them. We can write this as def greeting, and then in parentheses name, where name is our input parameter. Inside the function, we can print out a customized greeting by accessing the name parameter. Our print statement will now look something like this, print hi plus name plus exclamation mark. We can now call this function with greeting and then in parentheses avi, which is the input parameter for name. And we'll see that Avi gets replaced by the print statement and we'll see hi Avi printed out. Now as a quick exercise, can you define a function that adds two numbers and prints their sum? Give it a shot. If you manage to define this function, fantastic. What we're looking for is def add num1 comma num2. And then the reusable part of this function, the code will be print num1 plus num2. If we call add on 10 and 15, we can see that the sum 25 gets printed out. Well done. Before wrapping up, let's discuss a vital part of functions, the return statement. Suppose we want to save the result of the addition function instead of printing it. We define a new function, add, which will return num1 plus num2. The return statement essentially passes back the result of the computation to wherever the function was called from. We can then store the result in a new variable like sum, and then we can print this variable out. So sum is equal to add 12 comma 34 and printing sum out shows the value of 46. So you can quickly see how functions can compose off one another when the outputs of functions can be used as inputs of enclosing functions. Let's say that I wanted to multiply the sums of two numbers together. Let's define a new multiply function, def mul, which takes in num1 comma num2 and returns num1 times num2. Now, let's say that I have two sums, one and two and three and four. We can chain all of this together by saying print mul, and then the first input, the first num1, will be the sum or the add function of one comma two. And then the second input will be the add function of three comma four. One plus two is three, 3 plus 4 is 7, and then 3 times 7 by executing the mul function will get us 21. 
By using the return statement, we can enclose the outputs of functions as inputs of another function. Take note, the return statement marks the end of a function's execution. Once a return statement is executed, any code placed after it won't run. So to summarize, functions are reusable code blocks created with the def keyword. There is a unique function name, you can specify parameters, and then the reusable code that follows. Functions may appear a bit complex at first, but with understanding, you'll find them invaluable in your coding journey. That was an overview of functions in Python. Thanks for listening, guys, and I'll see you in the next video.